All right, the other uh, knife I was talking about in my search for one EDC to rule them all um, arrived today via UPS. So, haven't really played with it. Let's find out if it could be the one. So, if you're following any of this stuff, maybe you're not, maybe you just found this in the search query. By the way, hit like and subscribe. I have a ton of knife reviews. Cheap knives, Civivis, um, Microtech, Heretic, Hogue, um, Lion Steel, MKM, um, all kinds of good stuff. And I've also got a bunch of gun reviews, motorcycle stuff, whether it be, you know, what you, people consider your crotch rockets. Um, uh, you know, and also like uh, more classic bikes, like Triumph, Bonnevilles, Bobbers, stuff like that. If you like track days, you like tuning, you like maintenance, any of that stuff. We've got all kinds of good stuff here, so like and subscribe. All right, so one of the videos I've been talking about was, you know, I've got a bunch of really good, I know people have more impressive collections, right? Um, but I, I consider myself to have a pretty good knife collection. Um, I've got a bunch of knives that fall in the up to 100 category. So that's where your Kashaw blurs, your um, a bunch of Civivi blades, which are great blades for the money. They're, they're good, stout, well-made knives. Um, but then I've also got, you know, um, Heretics and, um, you know, Microtex, uh, Hoag's, um, the MKM's, Lion Steel's, and all that kind of stuff. You know, knives in the 150 to 350 range. And I got a bunch of those. And I go through different knives. I carry different knives on different days just to mix it up or whatever. Um, but I, I did start thinking in earnest about, you know, what makes a perfect pocket knife? There's the ideal of a cool, heavy-duty tactical blade that if you had to deploy it as a weapon and, you know, do some heavy-duty cutting and all this kind of stuff, you want something that could stand up to abuse, and that's good. But then I thought about, well, what, you know, over the years, what have I actually used a knife for? And it's like Amazon boxes and, you know, normal around-the-house stuff. And oftentimes I find myself needing a screwdriver. I find myself needing a pair of tweezers. I find myself needing to punch a hole in leather or bore a hole in plastic and run a zip tie through it to do a quick repair on the side of the road or something if I have a, uh, an, uh, you know, something, something going on with one of the motorcycles or ATV or something. But I'm not going to carry a Leatherman. I don't want a pair of pliers because those, those are great tools. But for the most part, those tend to be pliers and tools that also have a little crappy pen blade on them. I'm looking for a knife first, but then also has some of those other things. And so when you compare to like a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 or some of those other options, you know, they have the one-handed opening, they have some good features to them, they have the pocket clip that I like, but they're a one-trick pony. And so we started talking, and if you're following these videos, I've had a couple videos on what, um, you know, if I was going to carry a blade that I could use one-handed and deploy it and have it lock open so if I had to really stab something, you know, I could use this in a pinch as a defensive weapon if I needed to. Um, but then I've also got, you know, the other tools and things. And we went through this one. It's just a little too bulky, although, you know, it works, but it's a big, thick, heavy knife. Um, I love the adventurer size, but it's manual opening. And so while it does check some of the boxes of having, a, you know, a longer blade lock, um, things like that, the screwdriver and, you know, other tools, um, you know, it too fell short in some ways because I wanted one hand opening. These are great as a secondary knife for me. They're just too, too dinky and too little. We went through the Suiza yesterday, which is actually a cool little knife. Same space in your pocket as this, but actually a better, more ergonomic grip, a larger blade, and um, has a better uh, kind of a, it's not so glassy and smooth and slick. It's more rubbery feeling. So it really gets good purchase and friction in your hand. Nice curve to it. Blade is noticeably bigger in the same size package and lock. You got to push this to move that out of the way. So if you haven't seen the Suiza review, that's a cool little knife. Um, the quality is nice. It's get, I won't go through the whole thing, take up the time. Go watch my Suiza DO4 video. So I was going through Victorinox and trying to find what would make the perfect knife. And I was like, you know what? If we had this, maybe a little thicker, get some extra tools in there. If I could just get this with easy one-hand opening, this would be the knife. You know, you've got the can opener. You've got a wire stripper. You've got um, a, uh, bo a bottle opener. You've got all this stuff in here. You got tweezers, you got a toothpick, you got your uh, Phillips screwdriver, you got an awl. 
you know, but if you added a saw or something else, get a little bigger and get that one hand opening, problem is finding what I wanted. There's a one handed trekker, there's the ranger, there's the actual Swiss military knife. All those actually have the tools that I want, um, but they're all serrated edges. So someone had suggested this, the locksmith. I'm hoping this works. <laughs> so anyway, what does this have? Well, it's got the plastic that's more porous, a little more purchase. Um, also has really good traction when it's wet as the adventurer. Um, has the Phillips screwdriver, which I like. Also has one hand opening. Now, why I wanted this, you think, well, we already had the Ranger grip. The Ranger grip, I was looking for something a little bit smaller and lighter. It's not any thinner that way. This is as close as I could get to what I was looking for. Now, optimally, what I would have loved to have would be this with only a three layer. That would put it closer to this width, a little more pocket friendly, while giving me the thing that I really wanted, which was the one hand deployment. There are times when I'm trying to cut something and having to put what I want to cut down, pull this out, open it two handed, cut it, close it two handed, put it down, go pick up the thing I was trying to open. It's nice to be able to just open something and cut it and then put it away. Now, I will say that the way, unfortunately, in picking up the one-handed opening, when you have the locking mechanism on the Victorinox knives, they do it the opposite of every other company that I've ever seen in the world. Most liner locks open this way, and then you push the bar out of the way so you can use your finger to close it, one-handed closing. This makes you push it the other way, which is really awkward on your thumb to do that. With some practice, you can do it, but it's a little wonky. It's not intuitive, and you have to do it a certain way. Otherwise, the knife twists in your hand, and then you can't grip this. But you can, if you practice, <laughs> which I've had the knife all of, well, how long have you been watching this video? That's how long I've had the knife. So, But at least deploying it in a hurry, if I was one-handed, you know, one hand stuck in something or I'm hanging on to something, can't let go of it, but I do have to cut it, I can at least pull this out, grab the knife, and open it. It is a little thicker than I wanted, not going to lie, but here's how, here's why I went for it. The tools that it came with that are the reason, and unfortunately, like I said, you can't, there is no three layer in the Victorinox large. Remember, this is dealt, this is made in Delamont. This is from the older Winger line. It's been Victorinoxed. I use that as a verb. Um, they've changed some of the tools on here, but this thing is big. It's a really big knife, um, and it's a good bit bigger than that one. But in the end, I don't know, maybe I would carry it now. <laughs> not seeing how big this thing is. I, when you look at it compared to that, it's a good bit bigger. But this also has a corkscrew, which I don't have a need for. <clears throat> but in any case, this is slightly smaller and a little lighter, so I'll likely go with that. Here's the tools that it has that I liked and why I was willing to put up with it being one layer wider than what I would have considered optimal for me. You get the saw, which again is handy. I mean, say, well, where would you use a saw? I don't know. I could be sawing a limb in the woods. I could be at my friend's property. Um, I could be, who knows? I, I, I've seen where uh, someone, a friend of mine, his girlfriend was riding with us. Um, she's new to riding and got spooked in a turn. So what do new riders do? They hit the brakes. What happens when you hit the brakes on a motorcycle? You stand the bike up and it goes straight down into the ditch, which is about six feet deep, <laughs> down into the bushes and shrubbery. And I came back looking for him. And there I see two heads popping out of the uh, the shrubbery like I, like meerkats. And so we're trying to, you know, she's got like, you know, small little trees and saplings and brush that's kind of tough. It's kind of hard to tear just with your hand, you know, and stuff kind of wrapped around the bike and, you know, tangled in the spokes. Not spokes, but in the, in the wheels themselves. And it would be handy to have a little saw to saw that crap out of the way. Just, to, you know, not that we crash every day, but... I'm just giving you an example. Little things that happen and you're like, oh, you know what? I wish I really had a little saw. Wish I had a pair of wire cutters or, you know, whatever tool we're talking about. And with those Spyderco paramilitary twos and my MKMs and lion steels and things, those are great knives for a blade, but that's all that it has. So there's times when I need a screwdriver. There's times when I need something. I'm running out to the garage to find one. Well, here comes with that saw. Okay, that's cool. I could do with that. Here was the other thing that I thought was interesting. And I think about all the times, again, working on the bike, doing something. You have a file. You have a fine edge. You have a more coarse file. 
and you have essentially a hacksaw blade. That is handy. I just think about, you could be, maybe I got to cut through a chain link fence. <laughs> maybe I've got to cut through something, um, some kind of wire or chicken wire, or, you know, just there could be things I, I have to do. So I was like, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever use this. I could see me using a saw. I could use a saw around the yard. Um, and I can certainly, I think, find, you know, something, I break something on the bike. I got to cut a piece of metal off or file something out of the way because now it's bent and rubbing on something or whatever. I'm always having to go find those other tools. And now I have the option of carrying them with me. So that is the locksmith. Decent blade. Eh. It'll cut. It'll cut, but I'm going to tune that up just a little bit, maybe strop it. What I may do is that's the other, you know, the only thing, again, I complain about with the Victorinox is that they just will not put a freaking sharp point on there. I'm putting about 10 pounds of pressure on there, and it, it's uncomfortable, but that is not cutting. If I did that with one of my Tontos or just any of my other knives, I would have stuck that several millimeters into my finger, and I'd be bleeding like a stuck pig right now. That, to me, I, I mean, you could stab into something if you're using force, but you can't just easily pierce. It's a very blunt tip. Now you can cut because the edge goes right to that tip. So, I mean, I could, the tip is sharp. I mean, I can cut with it, but as far as piercing goes, on paper, it's easy because you start to cut and then you just push through. But if I had to actually pierce through some hard plastic, I mean, you go to buy something at the store, it's a $16 pair of freaking wired headphones. But to keep people from opening the packages, you're like, it, it's damn near bulletproof, right? It's this hard, it doesn't tear. It's this polystyrene that's super thick. And you're sitting even with a knife like, Ugh. but trying to pierce that, that's going to take a ridiculous amount of pressure to do that. That's, that's my complaint on all Victorinox knives is the points are often just, they're just too damn blunt. But I think I could carry this. It's, like I said, the same width, but it's three quarters of an inch shorter noticeably lighter. I mean, it's not massively lighter. It's not as light as this, but that's, I don't know my scale up here. It's at least an ounce or so lighter while still being heavy duty. So for me, this is probably for this type of knife, this is the closest I'm going to get to EDC perfection for a multi-tool knife with a decent one-handed opening locking blade. I've, I've been scouring everywhere. I've been looking for, for things. If this blade... And if I was like, I mean, a mechanical, but if I was, I mean, if I could take that blade and put it on this and give up those extra tools, but have the one-handed opening with the lock here and have that thinness while still having can opener, bottle opener, all screwdrivers, um, wire cutters, you know, toothpick, tweezers, all that stuff, that'd be, that to me would be perfect. A one-handed opening adventure. Victorinox, if you're listening, please make that knife. <laughs> I think the adventurer, or you've got your one-handed trekker, which is this knife. It's in between. That that to me would be perfect because it would give me the one extra, which just gives me a little more purchase while still being pretty pretty thin and, and lighter. Not quite as bulky as that, but it would give me the one-handed opening. Just make it with a non-serrated blade. Not everybody wants a fully serrated blade. I don't mind a secondary blade to be serrated um, because I think then you know it makes sense to be able to... Um, you know, cut a seatbelt or rope with that. But if you're having to slice or something or fillet a fish or, or whatever, you're, you're having to cut a packet. I just like having a straight edge. It's easier to maintain, easier to sharpen. Having both isn't a bad option, but I, I don't want to give that up to get the serrated blade. So Victronox, if you could make a one-handed opening adventurer or bring back the non-serrated one-handed opening, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> The one-handed opening tracker. These guys have a one-handed opening now. Just haven't found it in the States yet. Um, but they'll make their way over here. I'm sure things got slowed down because of the Rona. But that one's nice because that also has a lock, which you can use with one hand. So blade play, uh, non-existent, left to right. It's a Victorinox. It's buttoned up tight. A little bit front to back. When I say a little, I mean like a fraction of a millimeter. But that, that thing isn't going anywhere. I mean, that it's all the way over and butted right up against the liner. 
which is then supported and butted right up against those steel blades. So it's not like that's going to bend or go out of the way. It has nowhere to go. It's sandwiched in between steel. So that's a good strong lock, even if it does have a little bit of play. So anyway, that is as close as I'm going to find uh, to my EDC perfection. This is what you will see in my pocket now 90% of the time, unless I get the one-handed opening version of this, and I like it, although it's a little small. I do like the bigger knife. But that is it. That's all I guess I can say on that. It kind of takes the things I liked about the bigger Ranger grip. Now, I'll say the Ranger grip opens a little easier, and I think that that is because here this the ed, the blade is right on the left on this side. So your hand's right there, and so when you're pushing forward, it's a very linear motion. Here, because it's farther towards the center, which I understand why some people like the blade more centered on the handle for cutting tasks and using it. But opening it, I mean, it doesn't open hard, but your thumb has to go further in and then up. It just changes the angle and how you exert pressure on it. I find that I, it's a little more sensitive to how I grip the handle as opposed to here. It's, it's very simple. It doesn't want to squirm out of my hand. So... I do like the fact that how they have that lock there. That would have been even cooler <laughs> if they could have had this size but put the lock in like the Ranger grip where that logo is actually the lock that pushes it out, which is a similar concept to how the Swiza does it. It has a button there, and it does it the same way. Now, why might they do that? Well, because a lot of the people at Swiza or Swiza, whatever they are, a lot of the people they brought over to Swiza to, to start the knife-making portion of the company who's been making clocks and things for a century – Included the former CEO and a lot of the workers from Wenger. These are also made in Delamont. So they brought over a lot of those people from Wenger when they went out of business and were acquired by Victorinox. This is a Wenger knife. This is also former Wenger people. So notice that the lock, while it looks different, works the same way. So that would be cool if I had it on this. But yeah, this will work. I'm just going to have to practice opening it one-handed and then closing it one-handed. It can be done, but it'll take a little. It's like learning the Spidey flick. Never been a fan of it. A lot of knife guys are because I think it goes, it looks cool. But I'm like, whatever. If if the knife, if you're trying to Spidey flick, I see people say, oh, you can't Spidey flick it. Well, it's a flipper. It has thumb studs. Who cares? They open just as fast, if not faster. So there's no need to Spidey flick it. You're Spidey flicking it because you think it looks cool and because you think other people can't do it. So it makes you special. And maybe it does. Maybe you are special. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. But I never saw the point of it. So, But, yeah, you can't. That's the problem with it is you can't. Yeah, it's too tight. The Victorinox knives, and it may be because, you know, they think of a flick knife, tactical knives. You know, over in Europe, those are considered, ooh, taboo. Meanwhile, once you open the damn knife, it's a four-inch piece of steel. What does it matter how you opened it? Does it matter if you pushed a button versus flipped it versus slid it with your thumb versus whatever? No. That knife, it, it doesn't make a difference. It's going to cut and stab the same. Well, it won't stab as well because they put a blunt point on it. But that, again, may be a European thing. You know, when you're looking at a knife that is clearly tactical, a strong, piercing, really sharp point is part of that design criteria. Maybe because they want this to be more able to be sold in countries that are a bit more nanny state and strict with that crap. They want it to be able to be sold in those countries. And so they want it to look more like a tool. So I, I get it. You know, it's not for everybody. It's not my preference. But overall, I may just take a stone to that just a little bit on the tip, just the tip, and make it a little little pointier. But I guess at the end of the day, I can, I can make it work either way. So anyway, that's what we had today. Just quick overview. I've been on this quest I forget who it was that suggested uh, the locksmith to me, but thank you. Um, I'm going to start carrying this and see if I like it. It's a little thicker than I was hoping for. I was hoping for something a little thinner, but I do feel like it does sit in the hand a little better when I'm using it. I can definitely grip it a little better, so that may be the trade-off. I get some extra tools. I get a cool file. I get a hacksaw plus a wood saw. Those are handy tools. So I'll stop babbling. That's what I had for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow. We'll have uh, whatchamacallit, uh, your Saturday Morning Coffee with Dave podcast. Looking for some political things I'm going to talk about tomorrow, a little bit more on cancel culture and possibly why America is going to hell in a handbasket with regards to crime and why one of our parties is not only fine with that, they're actually encouraging and facilitating it. 
We're going to explore some of the reasons why I think that might be happening because it's it's blatant at this point. We have crime up double digits and all that stuff, and it's being allowed to happen and encouraged despite us seeing the results. So we'll talk about that. So if you're into knives and politics, stay tuned. Anyway, be safe. Have a good day, everybody.